Welcome to this episode of Practical Dispersions. My name is Nicholas Tito with Vance and Viridis Consulting, working together with Professor Stephen Abbott. In this episode, we'll do a walkthrough of using HSPIP for formulating a dispersion. The goal of this presentation is to learn about how to use HSPIP to quickly prototype and troubleshoot polymer designs for your formulations. So what is HSPIP? HSPIP stands for Hansen Solubility in Practice. It's an intuitive Windows app for formulation design, and the app provides guidance by bringing powerful chemical theories to formulation scientists in a practical and easy to use interface. Now within HSPIP, Stephen Abbott has developed a new module for particle dispersion formulation using the power of SF theory and a great tool developed by Wageningen University called SFBox. The goal of this new model is to provide an easy and interactive environment where you can actually prototype your polymers, your solvent, your particles, and interactions in order to create a new or optimized dispersion. So let's take a look at how to use this app in practice when you're building a polymer particle dispersion. Here you see the main window that you interact with when you use the app. On the left hand side you can see all of the input parameters for the dispersion. For example, the polymer and the polymer properties, as well as the polymer interactions with other entities in the system. Turning over to the right hand side, this is where you perform the calculations and view results. This is just a simple plotting window. And then at the lower right, you have a series of controls to set up how the plot looks and also the buttons to perform the calculations. All right, so let's walk through how you design a dispersion formulation. First step is you choose an architecture for your polymers. HSPIP offers a number of architectures that we've discussed in the previous episodes of this webinar. The first, of course, is a homopolymer. That's just a standard long polymer. You can also choose a dye block copolymer composed of A and B blocks, and then you can tune the size of those blocks as you wish later on. There's also the option for a comb polymer or a two polymer system, which is actually a blend of two different polymers within the solvent around the particles. Finally, you have a grafted polymer, AKA a polymer brush. And this is when the polymers are actually tethered chemically and permanently to the surface of the particles. The next step is to specify the properties of your polymers and also the interactions between the polymers and the solvent, as well as the surface of the particles. Let's use the polymer A or homopolymer as a simple example here. The first parameter is the polymer volume fraction. This tells you, of course, the amount of space that's occupied by the polymers in the solvent. It's just the concentration of the polymers times the polymer length. Obviously, if you increase the volume fraction, that means there's a larger concentration in your solution. The next parameter is the number of segments in the polymer. This is just the size of your chains. You have a rather broad range you can work with from quite short oligomers up to very long polymers. Okay, so we've defined the polymers and now we go on to define how they interact with the particles and the solvent. This is set by polymer solvent and polymer particle chi parameters. In this case, you just see the interactions for the single homopolymer with the solvent and particle. But of course, if you choose a different kind of architecture, then it enables these other controls that you can see over on the right hand side of this section. Now, actually, it's not always trivial to get the chi parameters from experiment. So more often you obtain the HSP parameters and then you can actually put these HSP parameters into the chi converter shown at the lower left of this window. Now the last step is to specify the properties for the particles in your dispersion. This is actually really straightforward. You first specify the radius of the particles. This is just an average. Of course, any dispersion has particles that vary in size over distribution. Now the app assumes that the particles are cubes, but this is actually a really good approximation for this level of theory, so no real problem there. You also specify in this section the Hamaker constant, which dictates the van der Waals attraction strength between the particles when they're unshielded by the polymers. And finally, you can choose the volume fraction of the particles. We've now set up the formulation and can move on to doing calculations and looking at the results. There are two options for performing calculations. You have the volume fraction profiles and the interparticle potentials. 
In the next two episodes of this webinar series, we'll go through these two outputs in detail via case studies and show how these two outputs can be useful for formulation prototyping. For now, the important point is that these calculations are really fast. The volume fraction profiles usually take less than one second to calculate, and then the interparticle potentials only take around one to 10 seconds. So the cool thing about this app is that it's actually almost a real-time experience where you can change the parameters as you wish on the left and you see the results update almost instantaneously on the right-hand side. Now, as we mentioned before, you can also change the setup of the plot with the plot controls provided. But more importantly, we'll walk you through a couple of case studies of applying this app to dispersion formulation so that you can get a clear idea of how to use the output from this in practice. All right, so that concludes this brief walkthrough of HSPIPSF, a very easy and practical tool for prototyping polymer particle dispersions. It's an intuitive, simple interface, and you have full control over the chemical design parameters for the polymers and the particles, as well as the interactions between those entities. The benefit is that you can really systematically vary these parameters in ways that are difficult or sometimes impossible to change in the laboratory, and the calculations are almost real time. You can run this app on a basic Windows laptop or desktop, and it takes at most 10 seconds to run a calculation, but in most cases, less than one second. This really is where the value of HSPIPSF lies for quickly testing designs and scanning through possible design parameters before diving into the formulation lab. All right, thanks very much for joining this walkthrough of HSPIP. In the upcoming episodes in this series, we'll go through a couple of case studies so that you can get a sense for how to use HSPIP SF in your R&D. Stay tuned.